not my own. To you I belong. Luke, the fifth chapter. Starting at verse 4. If you have it, say amen. If not, say wait for me. Help us, Holy Ghost. And the word of God says to the church on this morning. When he had stopped speaking, being Jesus, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled, we have worked, we have labored all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Thank you, God. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the son of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, I will make you a fisher of men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook, they gave up all and followed him. The title of our message this morning, if I might borrow your attention just for a few minutes, is I have too much yet I don't have enough. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you have a lot going on, but what you have going on is it going on for God. Is God in the mix of what you have going on? Repeat after me. We the I have too much, yet I don't seem to have enough. In the busy lives that we live, we can have a lot of things going on. And yet, in the midst of everything that you have going on, you can still feel empty inside. That there comes a time in your life that you get to a certain age where it's not money that you want anymore. It's not more friends that you want. It's not a bigger car. It's not a bigger house. It's not more clothes. But somehow uh, uh, you get to a place in your life where you just simply want some peace of mind. So much going on that you seem like you have so much, but yet something is missing in what you have. When we look at this gospel, of Luke in the fifth chapter. We find Peter, James, and John, the sons of Zebedee, that they are too have a lot going on. And they have a lot of things working for them, but yet they still do not have enough. Because it says that they had worked all night and still were unable to catch a single fish. And when they had come to land, they had decided to put everything away and call it quits for the day that the master Jesus interrupts their situation and tells them to launch out again and let down their nets and God is speaking to us today the kind to interrupt your life and to help you to understand that what's missing from your life is not more things it's not more money it's not a bigger house or a bigger car. What could be missing from your life is the presence of God. That sometimes I could have so much that it pushes out the presence of God in my life. Can I get a witness from anyone? That God wants to interrupt your life and say that God's way of doing things is not always your way of doing things. They had fished all night, church. 
But Jesus interrupts their uh, uh, occupation. He interrupts their, their tragedy. He interrupts this challenge of being able, unable to catch any fish. And he tells them to launch out again and do it my way. Somebody say it's God's way. Yeah, you, you, you have to understand in this life that we live, you can only live it two ways. I've been preaching it, and maybe some of you already got this before, but there's only two ways you can live your life, and that's either my way or that's it. Either you're going to live according to God's way or you're going to do it your way, and God is trying to wrestle this control from you and let you know that it has to be God's way because God's way is not your way of doing things. When I have too much of doing it my way and not enough of doing it God's way, just like these men's empty nets, my life will seem to be filled with emptiness. Preach, hallelujah. That when I do it my way and I go about getting things the way I want to go about getting them, that it don't matter who I run over, it don't matter who I hurt, it don't matter who I cut off, I want what I want and I'm going to have it my way. When you have too much of doing it your way and not enough of doing it God's way, baby, it will leave you empty inside. The Bible says, what profits a man to gain the whole wide world and lose your soul? There's only two ways you're going to live this life, and you got to make up in your mind either you're going to do it all God's way or you're going to do it your way. God says you can't be on the fence. You can't do it your way sometimes, and when you get in trouble, try to do it God's way. You can't do it your way when things are going well and do it God's way when things are going bad. God said, I want all of you. He said, I want you on the mountaintop. I want you in the valley. He said, I want you when things are going well. I want to be with you when they're not going well. He said, I want to be with you when you got a smile on your face, and I'll be with you when you got tears in your eyes. It's either God's way. It's going to be your way. Proverbs 16 says, there's a way that seems right unto me, but the end thereof will lead to devastation. When you have too much of doing it your way, it's going to leave you empty inside. And God says many of us won't give him control of allowing God to do it his way. Many of us won't surrender to God's guidance and God's direction for our lives because we feel like we know more than God. God sent me as a messenger to tell me that he can't do anything with a know-it-all Christian. God got no use for a know-it-all Christian. When you think you know more than God, when you think you know more than everybody else in the world, God says, I got no use for a know-it-all Christian. And just like these disciples, Jesus allowed them to fish all night and do it their way just to show them that they don't know it all. Yeah, yeah. These men, church, they thought they knew a little something more than the Lord. They knew how to fish. Uh, they knew it was because it was their job to fish. Uh, they fished for a living. They knew they had the right equipment for fishing. They knew they had the right location for fishing. They knew they had the right boat for fishing. They knew that they had the right time for fishing, but they still didn't know more than the Lord knew. How can you say that, Pastor? Because even though they knew how to fish, they knew where to fish, they knew what to fish with, the one thing they didn't know how to do was how to reach the fish. And God sent me to tell some of you know-it-all Christians, you might know what you're doing. You might know what others are doing. You might think you got the right tools. You might think you got all the right words. You say all the right things at the right time. But God said you got too much, yet you don't have enough. Because all that you got, all that you hold, you still don't know how to reach what God has for you. Can I get an amen? can do the right thing all you want to. You can be in the right place and 
say the right things and you can move the right way but without faith and trusting in God and letting go of your way and giving it to God you cannot reach what God has for you in your life God's ways are higher than your ways and I know some of you are well educated you got all kinds of letters and initials behind your name you made good grades in school but God says some of us can be so smart that we don't know anything you don't know that you can't see what tomorrow is going to be. In fact, you don't know what's going to happen in the next five minutes. You can know all the right things, but still, you don't know what God has for your life. God says there are things that only he knows about your life. Somebody say my life. There are things that God knows about your life that he will withhold from you in order that you might trust him and let go and let God have his way. Oh, preach, Pastor, help somebody. God says there are things about your life that he will not reveal to you because if you knew it, you would live for him. If you knew how the end was going to be, you know how we are. I know how I am. If I knew how the end was going to be, I'd try to fix it and mess with it and try to change it and turn it around. So God will withhold some things for me just for me to trust him, to live day by day, to walk by faith and not by sight. So when things catch me off God, I say, Lord, I trust you. Have it your way, God. I didn't want to get sick. I didn't want to lose my job. I didn't want to lose my money. I didn't want to lose that loved one. But God, I trust you because you saw it when I couldn't see it. God can't do anything with a know-it-all mindset. Church, God's way of doing things requires more faith. But your way of doing it will require more effort. Bible says they had worked all night they had put all the effort that they could in and still caught nothing but Jesus says yet again I tell you to launch out into the deep and let down your nets they had to obey God's commands by faith and let go of their own way of doing it so the examination for us this morning to determine if you're truly doing it God's way or you're doing it your own way is are you working harder or are you working with more faith? How hard are you working to accomplish what you want to accomplish in life? Or are you working by faith? I'm not dismissing hard work. Hard work has its place. But hard work is nothing if it does not start with faith. Hard work must start with faith in order for it to accomplish something. Come on, somebody. Help someone in here. Uh, when you start out college, all you college-educated folk in here, when you take that first class in your freshman year, they don't show you a degree to say, look, this is yours. You stay with us for four years. We're going to give it to you now. We're going to keep it in the desk. They don't show it to you, do they? They show you a church schedule. I'm mean, excuse me, a class schedule. And they say, you got to get 105 credits. And you look at that thing and say, I'm never going to get there. But you start by faith. And you take that first class. And you keep working by faith. And every semester after semester, you're taking classes by faith that there is something at the end. Good God Almighty. That if you keep working hard and you keep applying yourself, you will get the reward. But if you work without faith, you'll work and work and work and have nothing to show for it. You got too much and yet you don't have enough faith to trust God. God's way requires more faith but your way of doing it requires more earth effort. Doing things your way will only lead to frustration but doing it God's way will lead to promise and blessing. Listen, this is a truth that I pray we all can receive. You cannot control things that are out of your control. You cannot control things that are out of 
your control. All you will do is work yourself sick, worry yourself gray, stress yourself out, trying to control things that are out of your control. You can't control what your family is going to do. You can't control what tomorrow is going to bring. You can't control what your job is going to do. All you can do is give those things to God. Lord, I let go of my way of doing it. I let go of my need for control. I let go of my need for having everything my way and say, God, I give it to you. I trust you with my life. Though God, I have it all. I don't have enough if I don't have you. Doing it God's way is not the same as doing it your way. They had fished all night doing it their way, y'all. But then Jesus says, yet go out again and let down your neck. God says today either you're going to do it his way or you're going to keep doing it your own way. 